So remember I told you that uh, I asked for help from another coach a couple of weeks ago, right? Mm -hmm. So he told me that uh, for like to improve the gameplay, like uh, since I have only been playing the game for like six months, he suggests me to play to like pick two or three champions and play them all the time. So just to master those champions to understand the gameplay and after you understand the whole game, you can like increase your champion pool. And he's uh, he suggests me to play Malphite top and any mid. Okay. Uh, this mid. So for the past few weeks, I've been playing Malphite a lot. And uh, his analysis of my gameplay does help me a little. Like this actually helps a lot. How to use like when to use the teleport, like these things, right? Yeah. So, so it like I feel after his session, I feel more comfortable like winning the games. So, but the reason that uh, I'm looking for a new coach like you is that for some games I feel frustrated because I feel like I play Malphi the correct way, but still I keep losing the game or still lost. Um, like the Malphi, for example, is good at taking the engage, right? So after the engage, after using my out, um, sometimes the mid or the ADC just doesn't do too much damage to to the enemy team, and we do end up losing the game. That's when I got really frustrated. Like, I don't yeah. know how to. You... Yeah, the thing is, Malphite, it's very good to carry games, especially in lower healers because of his ultimate mainly. People don't yeah. know how to counter play it, and you yeah. normally get all the team together and you just explode with them. Um, but as a solo carry, he's not the best champion because honestly, you do need your team. You know, you need yeah. to team fight. Yeah. That's uh, so. That's why I'm trying to look for a new like a coach like you. So basically, I feel like in those games, I feel like I personally feel I did most of things correctly. Of course, I made some mistakes, but I still end up losing the game. So I was thinking probably like someone like some expert can look at the game and see what else can I still improve as a Malphite, or maybe I need to change my champion. Exactly. We'll look into that. So I'm gonna give you my example. If I'm playing on, on my main, most likely if I'm playing mid, I'll pick Ari, you know? Okay. But okay. if I'm playing in a, a low elo, maybe on a new account or whatever, uh -huh. I'm gonna pick, for example, Zed or Fizz. Because uh -huh. those okay. champions will just stomp the mid lane and I'm going to solo carry most of the game. Talon, for example, as well. Mm -hmm. You know? Because okay. people yeah, don't know how how to counterplay them and you can easily snowball and roam, split push and do much more. So if you understand that, you can easily just start carrying most of the games. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's probably good for you, right? Because you have good mechanics that you can outplay the players in the lane phase and just snowball. <laughs> I'm so, not sure I can do that. Uh, that will get there. Um, but one thing you mentioned it's to some degree right, but I do disagree at some mm -hmm. point. The part sure. of playing only two to three champions to master them. Um, that's correct. You should do that. But I do not recommend to do it like at this stage. Because okay. it's like fo football. I mean, you get your position. Okay. You're, let's say, in the front. Mm -hmm. y you shouldn't at all... Pa pass all your first training just you know scoring penalties because mm -hmm. the game is going to start and you don't even know how to dribble for example okay. Okay. so I compare it like that you know how to play your champion correctly but you don't know anything else you know because mm -hmm. more important that knowing your champion is knowing the enemy champion yeah yeah that makes sense I mean as long as you know what he can do to you he can by no means surprise you because you're expecting right. everything. Right. So right. if you only play three champions, you know, there will be games where you're facing something new and you just don't know how to play against it. And it's not your fault because you do know your champion. You just don't know the enemy's champion. Sure. Okay. So one thing I normally suggest is play normals before just... But I by now you're already playing rankings and all, so... But it's very important to at least have an understanding of uh, at least the basis of all the champions, what they do, how they interact. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you will be tunnel visioning 
only on that one, two, three champions, and you will be surprised many times and even outplayed because you don't know how to do it. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I do. I did play a lot of uh, normal games before I started ranking. Um, mm -hmm. Like I've been playing ranked games for only for past a month, I think. Before yes. that, I was playing normal games all the time. Okay. So about being top lane, that's uh, honestly the role you prefer, right? Mm, uh, not really. Like I'm open to suggestions. I'm honestly, I feel like I'm a like a white paper right now. I don't have a preference of lanes. So when I start the game, I really like uh, Vayne. So I played a lot of ADC and mid doing uh, like normal games. Yes. Um, I stopped doing that. After I play ranked game, because I feel like playing Vayne as an ADC or at least my, or like any other ADCs in general depends heavily on the support team and on the jungle. So I I easily get frustrated. Any, yeah, but ADC yeah ADC by itself well it's difficult. Plus yeah. Vayne you just pick like the worst thing <laughs> to start. <laughs> I mean yeah, it was fun to play. It's just she, when I got to the ranked game. It, I keep losing. So she I'm is back. very fun, but she's also one of the hardest to play correctly. Plus, yeah. she's not very good at the moment at the meta by itself. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, so after that, I start asking a lot of my friends. Like some of, some of my friends are batting and some are gold. And I also asked, uh, I had a few sessions with another coach. Um, they suggest me to play like either top, like any of those solo lanes, like top, mid, or jungle. Um, since I seldom play jungle, even in my normal games, so I like I choose to play top and mid. Hello. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. From all the roles in League of Legends, yeah, to carry, especially from the bottom top, you want mid or jungle. Mid or jungle? Yes. Uh, as a top laner, by standards, you're going to be isolated a lot of the time. So okay. if your bot lane starts losing, you don't have many chances to change that. Maybe you'll use a teleport or two, but not much than that. Okay. You may help mid lane, uh -huh. but you're stuck in a corner of the map. And yeah. by default, you're just farming until the rest of the lanes are ready to team fight or do a drake or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're playing champions, tanks, and crowd control champions that basically need the team to move forward. Okay. Okay. As on the opposite side, as a mid laner, you have control to help the top laner, to help the bot laner, to help sure. the jungler, and to just carry out the game. Because you're, okay. you, as a top laner, you are going to build up tanky sure. with, with your picks, unless uh -huh. you. I, I, unless you pick something like Aurelia or Riven, or yeah. so you're gonna work for the late game. As a mid yeah. laner, you're gonna have a spike in the late early game to the mid game, so you can easily at the start of the game start making impact. Okay. And okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And therefore, you know, you you create a bigger snowball effect to help your team win, and. Mm -hmm. In some degree, that is the same for the jungler because you mm -hmm. have impact in the lanes and you have mm -hmm. objective control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I can play more like uh, as a mid laner because, but I'm not too familiar with jungle, honestly. Like, I want to start learning jungle, but uh, I didn't have too many experience with like jungling. But on, if you enjoy mid lane, we don't need to huh? look much further than that because mid lane, honestly, it's mm -hmm. one of the main reasons. I mean, even if, I don't know if you watch competitive League of Legends. Yeah, I do watch some like uh, LCS and LCK oh. and the MSI right now. <laughs> Th that's great. Yeah. So talking openly, we're both grown ups. If you look at it, mm -hmm. most of the focus goes to the mid laners. You know, they're the, like the the party bitches. Everybody looks at the mid laners. <laughs> it's yeah. a little bit like that, right? Because yeah. that's the role that has, in most cases, more impact. Mm -hmm. You know, the mid lane you know, roams to the bot lane, roams to the top lane, deals yeah. a lot of damage, you know, starts snowballing, and even the junglers, by default, and pay more attention to the mid for that reason. Uh-huh. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I enjoy middling as well. I guess that's something I can go for. All right, that's important to know. Now, one thing, when you play the game, I yeah. haven't seen the replay yet, but uh -huh. if you can tell me, do you normally have a tendency to be an aggressive player or do you normally wait for the opponent to do the first step? Do you prefer to farm and stay under the tower? I, normally, I do prefer to farm. Because mm. um, I guess it's also related with the champions that I have been played. Um, so, for example, I played Vayne initially, right? So, Vayne, I, I have to stay close to my tower to farm until I get played of Ruined Kings. And then after that, I can ha I can have some like kill potential. And then, say, I played top lane, um, Malphite, Evelia, uh, and I played Fiora. So those champions, I feel like um, I tend to get farm and get more items and then go aggressive. Okay. So, well, I do understand that. But that would basically work better for late game champions. I mean, if by default you're a passive player, there's no reason to pick up champions that try to snowball early, because most likely, by default, your playstyle doesn't capitalize on that aggressive side of the early game champions. Okay. So no, I mean, I didn't want to go too aggressive. I do, I, I participate in the, like, the, the tradings, the thing. I just, usually I don't go, like, too aggressive in the beginning, like when I'm level one or level two, I don't like go like, like diving or something. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me which champions did you picked up when you played mid? When I played mid, I yeah, I played Annie, I played Kale. Um, that's for my recent games, and before I played a lot of Rice. I mm -hmm. really liked Rice and. Uh, Vega and a Victor. Okay, which ones did you enjoy the most? Um, I I really enjoy the rides, but I feel like it's also a a really difficult champion to master. So later on, I think I like this and Annie. Okay, so both of them, uh, either Fizz and Annie, are, are really good picks. So one thing that it's, I mean, it's statistically, you can see it in the stats if you look up into it, it's that champions with easier mechanics uh -huh. have higher win rate in lower elos and when people are starting them off, uh -huh. while harder champions uh, climb the win rate as more games as you do in higher elos. So for example, with any, let's uh -huh. say... If you played 100 games with any, okay. you're going to have a higher win rate by default compared to harder champions. And only, okay. if, only after, for example, 100, 200 games with the same champion is the win rate going to increase. So okay. there is no reason for me to tell you, okay, uh, Zed is really strong, you should pick up Zed. Because by default, it's very... How can I say the word? Sorry for that. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, it's... Uh, they have a high like a skill cap there? Yeah, it, it most likely, let's say, most likely in the first 100 games, even if he is very strong, mm -hmm. just because he is a high skill cap champion, you're not going to have a lot of success. Okay. While any may not be as strong in the big spectrum, mm -hmm. it's easier for her, for, for you to pick her up and just mm -hmm. start carrying games. Okay. And yeah, that makes sense. I start to feel that way after I played Rise and Vein. I, especially in the ranked games, I just I couldn't do anything. So, because in League of Legends, one thing many people don't understand is most of the reason, most of the time, when you win a game or when you lose a game or lane mm -hmm. or whatever, it's okay. not really because you know your champion or you did a skill shot correctly. It's more about decision making. All okay. the other things that we don't give much importance to, it's actually what makes the entire game. When you go B, when you buy the items, which item you, bu you bought, 
Uh, mm -hmm. When you push the tower, all these little details, people don't okay. really look into it, but mm -hmm. that's the actual game. Because if you put Faker in front of Faker, playing the same champion, mm -hmm. every champion has, I mean, a limit that it's how much you can virtually do. Okay. So yeah. if you're facing yourself with the same champion, uh -huh. what will make the difference is not the champion itself is the decisions you are going to make throughout yeah. the game. Yeah. If that makes any sense. It does. It's uh, it's more like the understanding of the macro game and the uh, exactly the strategy and the map awareness. Like these things that like your decisions affect the next Ex um, your actions in the game and yeah. Yeah, because it's virtual. There's virtually a. M maximum there's a skill cap that is on the champion and there is what he can do you can do much more than that the difference yeah. between you and all the other players it's your mind your decision yeah. making your strategy and that's what will make you win more games after that you can pick whatever the hell you want as l at yeah. least as long as you know the phases of that champion because honestly mastering the champion behind the real meaning of mastering the champion will only matter at high plot mid diamond basically before that mm -hmm. it's understanding the game okay and okay. the mechanics the, the split pushing the um, lane control uh, objective pressure all of that not getting mm -hmm. caught out of position that ha I imagine happens a lot in your games people dying alone in the jungle and stuff like that okay so that's the main point now, before uh, I actually load up the replay, so I can uh, try to make some comparisons as well. Sure. Did you come with any type of questions that you want to make me? Uh, so I already asked a lot of questions uh, from my previous coach. Um, I, I guess after that, the only question that I kind of had is like how do you actually main a champion right so he told me to main one champion or two champions right and you told me to i like, yeah definitely focus on a couple of champions but also play other champions so you know what you're gonna face exactly so, so still but if i i mean essentially if, even if i focus on mid lane i still have to like uh, main one or two champions right yeah maining so, it, maining the champions it's very important Right. So I guess regarding maining a champion, my question is like, how do you actually main this champion? Like, say your opponent choose the same champion as you. Like, how do you actually outplay your opponent? Like, through your understanding of this champion. Okay. So basically, like my uh, personal experience is, I played Malphite for two weeks. Right. For the past two weeks, I mainly like almost only focus on Malphite. I know his abilities. I know his items. So I know, like, under what situation I should max his Q, like that range thing, right? And under what situation I probably max E. So I feel like I know this, like, most core stuff about this champion. Mm -hmm. But uh, even I know this, I still lose games. So how do I, like, like, uh, so like, how do I keep improving as this champion? Like I. Like anything else I should do about this champion, or is that actually all about this champion? So you okay. know what I'm, what yes, I'm yes. Uh, I'm gonna answer to that and expand it a little bit. Sure. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna give you the example of why um, being one trick pony is not the best option. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I had a student that yeah. plays Lysandra, and uh -huh. he was playing against the Zed. Okay. Because, you know, low counter, Lysandra counter Z, and, and he mains Lysandra, basically. So uh -huh. what happens is that he uses his ultimate, but he died uh -huh. a couple of times to Z. Why? Because Z has a shorter cooldown on his ultimate. Okay, and yeah. I, and I asked him, why did you engage on the Z if you know that his ultimate is shorter than yours? And he told me, I did know that. <laughs> okay. And that's the reason behind of why you should know the other champions. You know, it's not meaning yeah. everybody. You don't have to play 50 games with every champion. But have a smart understanding of the skills, how the cooldowns are more or less, so you know when you can 
Count mm -hmm. the counterplay many times is exploiting the mistakes of other people. Right. Most of the times, a counterplay most of the times is not you being amazing. It's other people's failing, and you just capitalizing on that. Right. Okay. So, uh, the best offense many times is the defense, mm -hmm. and what you want to do is explore mistakes because pro players, if you think about it, they're the best of the best, mm -hmm. and most of them master the champions and they're really good at them so mm -hmm. the difference be between them and that what that's what makes faker so special is the mistakes faker has a very low mistake window and he easily capitalizes on the mistakes of other people yeah yeah yeah, yeah i heard a lot of uh, people say that like exactly yeah. and it's not really he who is making crazy outplays. Is people are giving him the window to do so, yeah. and he yeah. can he can look at it and he finds the mistakes. Mm -hmm. Now, you told me I played Malphite. Uh, you played Malphite. You know the items, okay. and how can I, you know, go further on that? Uh -huh. So there are there are different options. Of course, you doing a comparison. You telling me Malphite. Uh, you agree with me that, for example, mastering Malphite is somewhat easier. It's well, it's a lot easier than mastering, for example, Ezreal or LeBlanc. Yeah, I yeah, mean, definitely. Um, you don't really have skill shots. You don't have to combo many abilities. It's mm -hmm. very straightforward champion. But there is a lot. I mean, every laning phase you have, it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. Not only because of you, you're facing different champions, but yeah. the jungler is going to be different. So when you're going to be ganked, the combo mm -hmm. between the enemy champions are going to yeah. be different. The same goes when you have a jungler. The combo, the way you want a gank, changes when the jungler is different. Mm -hmm. And that moves to the entire game. Yeah. When the enemy... Every little different element a enemy team has changes uh -huh. the way you want to engage when against who you want to engage okay. you are playing malphite they have a uh, karma support mm -hmm. okay you know that she's going to kite you the hell because she can slow you easily okay. she can root you but in the next game they have a soraka you're not you're not as much worried mastering mm -hmm. this champion is not only knowing your abilities but is knowing how to play him against other people right right so there's that that's one way to improve it's just knowing how to react and it's playing more games and it's something that you don't notice as much but you start learning how to move yourself you know the micro management mm -hmm. the little detail clicks how to mm -hmm. dodge the skills and how to engage with him and when and another thing I like to do a lot, and I do that myself, is when I have the opportunity to just play with friends, I pick that champion I'm maining, and I mm -hmm. just go ham. Because one thing that's very important to know is your limits. Okay. It, you know, the numbers, exactly what your champion can output and how mm -hmm. much he can input. Okay. How much tower hits on a dive. Uh, in a, tr Let's say you're playing against Aurelia. Uh -huh. It gets to a point normally they they use the same type of items, almost always the same two, three core items. The rules yeah. are very similar most of the times. Exactly uh -huh. when you go to a trade, that really is full HP. You are full HP. Most likely she will do the same combo. Wait for her hair to be lower so she can stun you. Uh -huh. How much auto attacks can you exactly take? Uh -huh. And after that damage output from her, you know that she has the skills on cooldown right. is it worth for you to continue the trade or should you go out of the fight that's mm -hmm. mastering also the champion it's yeah. not just the combo it's you know all the little details and yeah. you're not getting that in 20 games N neither are you in 50 because that's small details mm -hmm. so don't don't worry because i okay. i'm pretty sure that as you continue playing you will discover different things okay yeah it's just small details, you know. Many times we don't give the right 
uh, importance to the details that we should? Yeah, I guess one thing you mentioned is uh, like the like the laning phase. I mm -hmm. have been having trouble with, like especially with male fights. Um, like especially when I face, uh, like in, one, in a few ranked games, I my opponent was uh, Chaga. Yes. Um, and uh, the other one, like is Garen. So especially the, um, another one, I think it's uh, Atrox, I think. So these three champions, I had huge trouble like facing them in the laning phase. Like I couldn't farm. I have to stay under my turret, and they can just keep poking me. And by any chance, did you figure out what was the main issue? Um, so for those games, if my teammates are doing okay, or not, at least uh, not uh, the entire game, the laning phase. So you're facing Garen or Shogat, and you're having st you're struggling against them. Did you figure okay. out what was the main issue? I did not. I don't think I know why. Kind of okay, so there's a thing, uh, I like to divide champions a little bit by yeah. categories. So okay. for example, I'm going to give you an example of AD carries. Uh -huh. I, f I find there are AD carries that are utility AD carries, you know, okay. as they yeah. grow up in the game, they're not really, for example, Vayne, uh -huh. it's a hard carry, damage dealing AD carry, that's something many people say. For example, Caitlyn for I see as a utility AD carry. Okay. She doesn't do as much damage as Wayne. You want to throw out traps, use yeah. your net to slow people or to get away. You can use your yeah. sniper, your ultimate, not only to kill somebody, but also to engage a fight, you know, prepare it. Mm -hmm. The same goes for Jin, utility AD carry. Then you have okay. the, ca the casters AD carries. You okay. most likely not out just auto attacking it's more about skills like okay. Ezreal, uh, Lucian to some degree, Corky mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the same thing goes for the top laners. Okay. Malphite is a caster utility champion. Okay. Um, as for example Aatrox even though he has abilities okay. he's a hard carry damage dealer. Right. He's going to win against you every fight if you both just auto attacking right right okay so what's the main issue that a caster champion may have it's not being able to use his abilities what do garen and shogat have in common garen and shogat yeah what do both of them have in common um they are using abilities they silence you yeah, they do, yeah. They can silence you, and by that, they are going to delay your abilities that are yeah. the main source of your damage and utility. Right. You're yeah. not being able to slow them, you're not getting the extra armor, you're not getting the slow off. Mm -hmm. Also, your E slows the enemy attack speed, correct? Yes. Garen doesn't need attack speed because what he does it, after he silences you, it's he spins. Yeah, he spins. Uh, if I under a certain health, he will just out me. So, yeah. by that, if you're following with me, he is also what type of champion? Is he a damage dealing hard carry or is he a caster? Um, he's more like a caster. Exactly. If you silence Garen, he sucks. Because. Yeah. His main damage output and his utility comes from the spin. But that's why you have that much of an issue against Garen. Because first of mm -hmm. all, he's going to silence you. And after you use your abilities, he doesn't yeah. really care. Because yeah. he, he doesn't auto-attack you. So the slow uh -huh. makes no effect. Yeah. That's why I was saying, like, in the laning phase, like, between Malphite and Garen or Malphite and Chogus, um, that trading doesn't really benefit me as Malphite. You, and you don't want to trade. Okay. How do you farm under the tower? Um, That's something that I'm, I usually can't... Usually, like, I, I know the, like, for those minions, they have two, two types or three types. One is that the mini minion, I guess they go close to you and fight close to you. So for those um, minions, um, I will just let the tower hit them twice and I will do last hit on those. And for those like ranged 
uh, minions, I will hit them once and then wait for Terry to hit them once and then I'll finish them. Exactly. So, the thing is, by playing champions like Malphite, tanks by yeah. default, uh -huh. uh, many times just don't have the damage to win a trade or to fight and yeah. you really will have to learn how to last hit under the tower right and that's something that like you just said that's the science behind it and after that it has to be you practicing you know no yeah. coach yeah. will magically tell you how to last hit under the tower yeah yeah because by default yeah as a mid laner it's the same concept on the rangers mm -hmm. on the range mm -hmm. minions one mm -hmm. attack, one tower hit, one attack. But for yeah. example, if I'm playing a champion that has a lot of AD, it's only one tower hit and one attack. Right, right. So yeah. then you have the minions aggro. It's something that will uh -huh. come with experience and it's all you that had to practice that. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's uh, like the laning phase. I know I was not uh, on the edge against these champions. That's why what I was trying to say, uh, another thing is like, if under that situation, say I, I'm facing Trogoth on top, so I'm okay just stay under my turret and keep farming. So if my mid laner or like ADC is doing okay, like it doesn't have to be perfect, just as long as they have some damage going out in the mid game or in the late game when we have a team fight, I will still have a chance to win. But if I have to farm under my turret and my mid laner and my ADC is not doing that good, then it's definitely going to be a lost game. That's what actually frustrates me. Exactly. Now, before we move to that question, just another thing I kind of missed out sure. in the part. And there's another little similar thing I've noticed about all your three problems is that, first of all, as Malphite, you have mana, right? If yeah. you look at it, Garen doesn't use mana, uh -huh. right. Aatrox doesn't use mana, and uh -huh. Shogat uses mana. But he restores mana as he kills minions as well. Okay, yeah. So, there's already one advantage they have. You know, resource management. You have something, mm -hmm. if your mana ends, you're pretty much stuck and they don't have to worry about it as much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, that's one of the reasons you may have problems as well. But about that, it yeah. it's part of the game, you know. And many people uh, kind of cry about it. Oh, again, another champion without man uh, OP. Um, and the second thing is, if you look at it, all of them have better, um, how can I say, sustain in the lane than you. Garen restores HP when out of combat. Yeah. Shogat restores HP when killing minions. And the same thing goes for Aatrox. So basically, what I imagine, without looking at your games, is that you're getting out-sustained. Okay. So yeah. I, I imagine it gets to a point you're standing under your tower very low, and they're almost full HP because they're always getting their HP back. Yeah, yeah sometimes, yeah. So about that, one thing you can try to do is try to get an item that helps you get some sustain back okay. and try to work with them. So for example, one of the options is to s use the flask. Uh -huh. You know, the refillable potion. So you will be more um, gold efficient. Okay. And the other option is to go for some sort of item that gives you HP rege regeneration. Okay. Something like, for example, Warmorgs or Spirit Visage. Even though mm -hmm. it's not the most optimal, building pad for Malphite, sometimes mm -hmm. you have to adapt to the laning phase and to, situ yeah. to the situation. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So if you're struggling as much because of that, because of the out-sustain part, that's mm -hmm. one of the options. Okay. Great. Now, the other thing you were saying is that your main issue is when the bot lane starts losing too hard and in a team fight they don't do the damage for you to win, correct? Yes, I think so. So I can use my out to engage the enemy champion and to knock them up in the air, right? Mm -hmm. I usually knock two champions, two or three champions up in the air. Like usually I try to aim their mid laner or their ADC. Like in general, it depends on the um, like enemy composition. So if I knock them up in the air, and at this time, a mid laner and my ADC, 
or my jungle should go in and do the damage to those two like Adam to opponents and then just to kill them so we can take care of the rest. If they can do that then the game still is winnable but if they don't have if, if they don't have enough damage then definitely we're gonna have trouble. Well you can there's uh, there's the problem about being top lane. There's only one thing you can do before the actual team fights is if you have the opportunity uh -huh. for example try to teleport gank them. Yeah, you know, try to some way try help to help them snowball, but as a top laner you kind of stuck, unless you want to sacrifice the tower. Sometimes it's even preferable for you to just lose the first tower, so you can have safe farm in the second tier, yeah. and roam a bit more. Mm -hmm. And when the team fights come, sometimes one thing that is better to do is to delay your ultimate. So yeah. you can get a better multi-man knock-up mm -hmm. or to try to peel for your AD carry because one thing that yeah. does happen, I'm not saying it is you that do that because mm -hmm. I haven't seen your games yet, it's sure. the Malphite engages and mm -hmm. alright, it's a good engagement, he got multiple portions, but then the team counter-engages and the Malphite is stuck in the backline of the enemy while the front line of the enemy is going for your AD carry. And if you're not there yeah. to protect him, maybe it's not just he doesn't have enough damage, is he doesn't have the opportunity to deal the damage. Okay. So as the tank, not always you just have to be, you know, engaging or being mm -hmm. in the front. Sometimes mm -hmm. you just have to be with your carry, you know, protect him. Right. You still right. have a slow, you still have some utility. And if mm -hmm. you delay the knock up, mm -hmm. you can protect the AD carry. And even if it is little damage, instead of dealing little damage for 5 seconds, mm -hmm. he will do it for 10 seconds. Right. Okay. So that's another thing to keep in mind. It's yeah. how to team fight. You okay. may. Or you can, if you're ahead, your uh -huh. itemization may uh -huh. be a little bit more aggressive. Yeah. Because Malphite, if you just do a little bit of AP, or Frozen Gauntlet as well, something to slow them and to stick to them, mm -hmm. you still can hurt a lot. With a Sunfire Cape to help you a, a little bit as well, still being tanky, doing some extra AoE damage, you can still do a little bit of damage. Right. Okay. But yeah, that makes sense. To fix the issue of the damage output, uh, even though Malphite is a very good solo queue pick, if you really want to be able to do more to some degree, without even talking about playing mid lane or something, picking... I mean, I do. I, I don't really... I think it's the time for me to change, to make some change to the champion force. Well, then we can easily look into that. Uh, but other than that, I would suggest you play other top lane champions, uh, like... Irelia, Lysandra, uh, Ryze, because those champions do have more damage output while still have utility and mm -hmm. have more solo carry potential. Fizz okay. top lane, Echo, with uh, off tank build. I mean, if you're suggesting that uh, mid laner is better like for solo queue, I can play mid lane. Like, I played a lot of mid lane before as well. Well, then honestly, I, I think there's no point on... Keeping to talk about top lane, because as okay. a mid laner, you can have a lot more impact in the game. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So, <clears throat> let me just drink a little bit of coffee. I'm talking yes. a little bit. Okay. All right. So, let's... Let me just come here in a sec. If Let's give you uh, my idea here. My idea here would be we'll try to figure out like five champions now. I'm gonna try to find five champions for you. Okay. Um. So uh, one more quick question that I was really curious. Yes. I asked you. It's still about top lane, but it's not about uh, specific champions. So you know, 
when every meta come out, people will discuss, oh, this champion is very OP, this champion is OP. So how do you usually tell that? So for example, like for like uh, hard carry top laners, people use uh, Riven, people use Irelia, sometimes people use Fiora, right? Correct. I see I see a lot of people use Riven and uh, Irelia to like go all the way to challenge. But uh, like, why do people think these two champions is better than Fiora? Because honestly, I think Fiora is better than Irelia. Irelia does do true damage, but he doesn't like she doesn't have any like uh, abilities or spells to block any damage, right? Like Fiora does have Fiora and Riven. Like, both of them do have the uh, damage reduction thing, like Fiora's W. Like the the parry, yeah, the like parry. Block all the yeah. So why people still think like Iberia and Riven is better than Fiora? Like just just these things in general. Uh, cause first of all, Fiora to do the damage she actually needs to carry, she needs to almost be a glass cannon. Almost, you need to go like Riven full damage okay. in most of the case you may have one two items defensive but most okay. of the damage need most of the items need to be very aggressive items okay uh, that gives the advantage to irelia that can have more defensive items because by default irelia is more tanky okay. and to some degree the same thing happens to riven because even though she builds a lot of offensive items mm -hmm. she her shield scales with uh, attack damage. Okay. So it, even though she's going full AD or something huh. like that, it's to some degree she's still scaling some defensive aspects. Uh, the second and very important one is the crowd control effect. One of the most important things in League of Legends is CC okay. stuns and slows, because the worst thing that can happen to you is just not being able to do something yeah and both irelia and riven have those options crowd control yeah. on the other okay. side fiora doesn't have that okay uh, after that irelia really well played can easily just ignore the entire front line and directly go for the ad carry thanks to her mobility the Q. Yeah. Uh, the build she normally takes with the Trinity Force and all of that will give her an insane amounts of damage output. Mm -hmm. And thanks to her W, that gives her the extra yeah. lifesteal. Even though she's building some tankiness, the Guardian Angel and whatever, mm -hmm. she deals a lot of damage. And she can stick to a target, and it's very hard to stop her thanks to mm -hmm. the tenacity she has. By default, okay. you know, okay. she resists more to stuns and to crowd control effects. Okay. And that makes her better than a Fiora. Because in some situations, even if you are okay. a very fat Fiora, mm -hmm. if the Maokai snares you, mm -hmm. you're dead. Yeah, okay. If you try to reach a backline, but they're full of CC and tanks, you're not going mm -hmm. to be able to reach the backline. And Fiora and Riven have more mobility, they have control, crowd control, okay. uh -huh. and can reach the AD carry or the carry, whatever they want to reach, easier. Okay. And that's the main reason. Makes sense. Okay, that explains a lot. Yeah. Cool. I, I, I think that does make sense and yeah. shows you why both Aurelia and Riven are yeah. by default better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fiora is very strong, but she's in to some degree more limited and as you climb the ladder people will know how to play against her yeah and yeah, that's really that's a big issue yeah oh great great uh any other question you had or um, for now no i guess that's all i have for now okay so the plan i'm going to have you here uh is i'm we'll, we'll try to figure out five champions for now sure from the five you'll just choose whatever you want during after today you okay. play them you see how it goes okay and the idea is i'll try to find with you here now champions that are easy easily picked up you know as a new player if you never play them at all mm -hmm. and 
that are good in the meta and good to carry your games in solo queue. Okay. So I'm not going to tell you, okay, Malzar at the moment is broken, play him. Mm, you know, it's not, I'm going to give you a very balanced champion that even if it doesn't stand out, okay. you know, he is solid. Because, for example, Zed is always in the god tier and in the tier list and whatever. Let's yeah. ignore him, okay? <laughs> yeah, it's hard to play. Let's ignore him. So the first one we're gonna put here is Annie. You said you played her already. Did you enjoy playing her? Uh, in the first game I did not, but later on I did enjoy her. Did you play her after the update? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. I, I guess the, her ultimate is forced, I think. Okay, let me just look here really fast and we'll talk about each one of them and I'm gonna tell you why mm -hmm. sure. I do believe they are pretty why I do believe they are good picks. be nice to have here let's think would be nice to have a ad option uh yeah in case you have too much ap in your team so uh pa -pa -pa. <laughs> Not that many AD mid laner, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, any. First things first. You Well, okay. about the any, there's not much to be said. You already... Crap. You already know know the champion the reason uh -huh. why i'm giving you any here it's in the lane even though her skills are have a short range it's very okay. easy to farm with auto attacks because of the mages any is the mage with most auto attack range okay so even if you're out of mana or whatever you can easily farm with auto attacks and mm -hmm. even arrest just with auto attacks because her range is the longest sure. Second, you can easily farm minions with your Q, okay. as you may know, because it okay. refunds the cooldown and the mana, so it's very hard okay. to run out of mana. Okay. And after that, she has a lot of burst. You can easily, even if you get ganked, you can easily turn a gank into double kill for you because of the burst you have, the stun, the AoE. Okay, okay. Uh, the Tibbers in a team fight, if you hit multiple persons, First, it's gonna hit hard, it's gonna stun them, and you can mm -hmm. even use it to push the lane. Let's say you won a team fight and mm -hmm. you don't have minions to push the tower. Or, right. or to tank drag dragon or whatever. Tibbers, mm -hmm. you can use it. So, for that reason, it's very good. Um, now, about items for any. I'm gonna suggest you to normally build I mean as a core you know the first two items I, I, I suggest you is yeah rod of ages okay Ludens echo okay okay so, so uh, regarding so one question here yes 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 I, I like I know a lot of mage champions, they tend to do Ludens Echo, but that item I don't see the benefits of building that. Like why do we do we have to build this Ludens Echo? So one of the one of the reasons, first of all, is any by default doesn't have much AoE damage. Okay. Without counting on your ultimate, you know, you have your single target ability, your Q, and you yeah. have your W, but your W is even shorter range. So in a team fight, 
if everything goes perfect, you may throw a W in there thanks to the Tibber stone or whatever. But mm -hmm. after that, you have to keep your distance to some degree. Right. And the Luden's Echo is going to help you maximize your damage by, if people are together, you're going to deal AoE damage. Okay. Plus, if you're having a difficult laning phase or whatever, but most likely the laning phase will end by the time you do Luden's Echo, uh -huh. it also helps you with that. But okay. out of that, helping you push and do AoE damage, it okay, also yeah, gives yeah. you movement speed. Because one problem any has is a lack of mobility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So having a little bit of extra movement speed helps you roaming, helps you catch up with people, you know, kite them if you want to kite them. And that little extra movement speed also makes a huge difference. Yeah. Okay, but, yeah, that makes sense. So if that does make sense, that's the reason why many people use Ludens Echo. Okay, okay, great. No, it's not just because it gives you a AP stacks, uh, AP okay. stats, but also because it gives you indirectly ability that you shouldn't have. It expands okay. your damage to AoE damages. Um, so yeah, by default at least these two items. Of okay. course, after that, you have the Zonias and the Abyssal. Abyssal, okay. it's very strong on any. I think it's like this. Because since her abilities are very short range, you're, uh -huh. you're always having the passive part of the Abyssal working on the enemy champions. The magic okay. res uh, reduction, magic resist reduction will always yeah. be working. So, Fizz, you also played with Fizz, right? Yeah, I did. I like this champion a lot. So the reason I'm telling you also to pick Fizz, it's first of all, he's of these the easiest champion you're gonna have from this list, close to Lux, uh, to reach the backline. So let's say the enemy team has a has a AD carry that's very fed. Mm -hmm. With any, you will have to flash to get in range, maybe, you know, it's gonna be harder. With yeah. Fizz, you can easily reach the backline. Literally one shot, the AD carry, and yeah. most likely get out in time. Okay. In the lane, at the start you may struggle because you are melee and you'll get poked. Uh -huh. So you'll have to be a little bit patient. Don't go overboard. It's about patience. Get that level 6. Get the first item or two. Uh -huh. And you'll just be able to one shot most of the people, honestly. And roam a lot with fizz you can easily gank lanes because you got your ultimate if you hit your shark most likely that guy is gonna be dead even okay. if he flashes because of the slow and the knock up okay and it's safe because you have the jump uh, the playful trickster to okay. jump and to avoid abilities so okay. you, it's very safe to play fizz for him the items i'm gonna tell you to always at least have it's lich pain and Zonia. Okay. So the reason why Lichbane is Zonia, it's the Lichbane. Well, it, as a AP fizz, you want that to increase your damage. The Zonia, yeah. it's many times you will go in, like the example I was giving you. Yeah. About going in into the AD yeah. carry, and maybe you you use your uh, playful trickster mm -hmm. to go in. You'll use the Zonia. To, to wait for the uh, cooldown. Now, okay. in the skill order, on Fizz, it's max E first, W second. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Okay. Now, more about Fizz. Yeah, as Fizz is that, be patient in the early game. Max mm -hmm. you E first, so you can have a shorter cooldown. Uh, the E will help you clear waves with some AP and yeah. E max. You basically just use your E and you clean the wave. And it's basically your safe mechanic skill. So if you get sure. ganked or whatever, you always yeah. want to have E up. Okay. Uh, try to roam. If you have the lane pushed, um, always try to roam. Okay. And in the late game... With Fizz, honestly, you can carry a lot of games because you will always, in most cases, be able to kill the champion that is most fed of the enemy team. Yeah, only for something that I'm good with Fizz. 
So if you enjoy Fizz and you are good with him, yeah. go for it, man. Honestly, just play Fizz. Spam Fizz, that's one champion that's easily, easily one of the best to start carrying your games at that stage. I guess I have to watch some YouTube like, game, game plays to learn this champion more. Now, Lux. Uh, <clears throat> the reason I'm giving you Lux is when it comes to mid lane, Lux is one of the safest champions there is. Uh, you can farm only with your skills. On Lux is very important to have cooldown reduction, but we'll move to the items in a bit. Okay. If you're having a hard lane, you it's very easy with Lux to just throw your E. Yeah. You wait for the max timer, you know, for it to, to explode alone. And with 20% cooldown reduction, you can already throw another E immediately after it. Okay. So, you know, you don't even need to be in range to auto-attack. With 20% cooldown reduction, you can just use your E to farm. Right. Uh, in this case, it's of course Max E and then Q. Sorry, okay. keyboard. And then Q. Okay. Um, Lux is very safe. Uh, in the lane, it's very easy for Lux to prepare a gank for a jungler, thanks to the snare and the slow. Yeah. You have enough damage to later on one shot most of the mages i mean if you snare him you do your e and your ultimate i mean yeah. even if you don't kill him he has to go out of the lane and you will gain experience and gold advantage yeah you can roam with her as well very easily and you don't even need sometimes to reach the lane sometimes it's just a matter of reaching mid river and using your ultimate to grab a kill because the guy is running away low you can steal drakes, barons, you know, all those small opportunities make a huge difference in a game. Yeah, I don't know. When it team fights, let's not talk about team fights. On those champions with well cause, Lux is one of the best team fighters. Okay. You have your shield, you have a lot of utility for your team. Because you can shield them, you can slow the enemy, help your team mm -hmm. kite or chase, you can mm -hmm. snare you can basically prepare engagement you can okay. save your AD carry with the snare you have a lot of damage output AOE wise you know very good team fighter if your team is lacking CC if your team is lacking any type of CC or is lacking a little bit of AOE or damage Lux okay. is a very good pick okay so in this case Morello Brabadon straightforward. Okay. Then Sonia Lich Bane. Okay. Okay. Depending. If the game is going well and if you just want to do more damage, go for the Lich Bane. If you see that you are getting focused a lot or if you're playing mm -hmm. against the Z, remember mm -hmm. always the Sonia. Yeah. Yeah. I hope I'm not I'm giving information enough for you to see why I'm picking these and I hope yeah, you yeah. do agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's really good. I like to hear you explain why you pick these champions, like what we have pros and cons. That's really helpful. Yeah, I'm trying to pick champions for what we talked. I understand that you really want to win more games, so I'm trying to pick champions that you don't you won't need to use as much of the time to understand them. It will be easy for you to pick them up and they do have a lot of impact in the game. E that's yeah. kind of the list I'm trying to build yeah. here. Yeah, man. One thing I I was I didn't I forget to like uh, tell you like I feel like you think of me as the person who only wants to win the game and climb the rank. I do want to win the game, but I I think improving the understanding of the game is also important. So you can like in your session if you have any suggestions to me, like in general to improve the game, just tell me. You don't have to like, be reserved to them. Just yes. Yeah. I, uh. I don't, um, by by no means I tr did try to avoid, you know, understanding the game or explaining the game. It's just like the way I see it. Uh, yeah. I hope that you are in the same opinion. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. am. Um, it's better for me now to tell you, I mean, let's say you're my son and you say, Daddy, I, I like to explain all metamorphical many times. I think that's yeah, the yeah. word. Uh, Daddy. I want to do sports for a living. Okay. I'm like, okay, so here are the gloves. Go to the goal. You're gonna be a goalkeeper. 
and I'm gonna explain you explain you how it's football. <laughs> maybe you don't really like football. Maybe you wanted to play basketball. Okay. Well, crap! I just spent five years telling him the rules of football. Why? I mean, at this point, if your issue is you want to deal more impact in the game, you want to find a shortcut to win more. Let's get this out of the way. I mean, let's say if we didn't do this now, I would give you a session about how top lane works and how you should play top lane. And after a couple of sessions, we would see that the issue is that maybe you should be playing mid lane to impact more the game. To some degree yeah. of everything we talked in the top lane, 50% of it, it's non -need, not, not needed to know basis for now. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. So if we get this done, maybe the next session, if you're interested in having more with me, mm -hmm. we'll be looking into a Lux game or a Fizz game, and mm -hmm. everything we'll see in that game will help, help you more directly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this session has been really helpful so far. And I will probably like, keep in contact with you and we'll have another session in, like, this weekend or maybe next week. Um, so the thing I was trying to say to you is like, these champion picks are really good and I would like to spend more time like playing mid lane, the laners. But uh, um, I'm just saying that you don't have to be, like, confine yourself to give me information only to win the game. You can also tell me like, how to improve the game in general. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not just gonna, I, I, I didn't mean to just win the game and not enjoy the game or not improve the game. Because I think if you improve at the game, you will win the game. Well, that's, of course, I mean, there's nothing to argue against that, right? <laughs> if you want to win the game, you, you have to improve at the game. <laughs> I, I'm just, instead of giving you uh, a shovel at the moment, I'm trying to give you a tractor. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know? It has been good, yeah. But at the same time, of course, after we get this done, of course, my point will be, how will you now win the game with what with the tools I'm giving you, you know? Sure. That's the next step. Sure. Okay, I, great. I mean, that's my thinking process. I may be wrong. Maybe you're expecting something else, but... No, 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 it's good. It's really good so far. I'm just saying that you don't have to think of me as a person who only wants to oh, win no, the game. Oh, don't, no, don't worry <laughs> about that. No, do yeah. not. If you just wanted to win the game, you would have paid somebody to boost your account instead of paying me to coach you. So Yeah, yeah. I, I still try to like understand the game and improve my uh, lifestyle. Exactly. Don't worry about that. I don't think like that. Yeah. Uh, and now I got lost. Uh, yep. Okay. Now next. Velkos. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to end this. So anyway. Uh, Velkos. Have you ever played Velkos? Um, one or two normal games. I played a lot in a fix and a fears and any, but not that much Velkos. Okay. So Velkos is basically... A lane bully, it's very hard to get him. You know, yeah. you do. Yeah. He has insane. His burst is very high if you hit all your skills because of all the true damage and all of that. Mm -hmm. His damage is ridiculous. And in this team fight, you know, if you just hit a knock up or your W gets a proc, yeah. use your ultimate. His ultimate is very strong. Okay. And in the lane, you can easily just bull, uh, bully people. And right. if the jungler comes, and if you hit your slow and your knock up, mm -hmm. most likely that guy is going to be dead. Yeah. I mean, you know, he doesn't because your ultimate has such a long range. If you just prepare it, the guy doesn't get away. So in Velkos, uh, the first ability, I would, I mean, that depends. But let's start with WQ. Okay. Clear the W first because it will help you clear the waves better, you know, and as long as you get the slow from the Q, that's good enough. Mm -hmm. uh, from, for the items, here though, there is no particular order, but the, these are two items you should have. Okay. Morello and Riley. I always, I think it's like this. Okay. I always, Riley Scepter, you want the slope because of your ultimate and all of that, some extra mm -hmm. HP. 
but mm -hmm. you want the cooldown as well and the mana regeneration. I see. Now it depends. You know, if you're having mana issues, if you see if you see you need mana, you go for mm -hmm. the Morellos first. Okay. Uh, if you think you're doing okay, you can go s directly to Riley because that will help you deal more damage with your ultimate thanks to the slow. Okay. So after that, this we have the hunting guys and of course Sonya aspect okay. of it. Okay? okay. And if you're really getting fed, just remember there's always the straight up rabbit on that cap. That's something I don't yeah, need to yeah, tell yeah. you, right? Okay. So yeah, and with Welcos, it's not as much as roaming. He isn't as good as roaming. Just keep shoving up the lanes. You know, try to take the tower. Sure. Get a couple of kills, and once the team fight starts with your ultimate and your utility, you will clean the enemy team. You, will, this guy does a lot of. It's kind of like Lux, you know. He has a big laser, yeah. and it hurts a lot. <laughs> so as you can see here, if you look at it, only Fizz is not in the equation. But I'm giving you champions that have like a crap ton of damage, and it's a weak. And this is fixing your main issue. Your team is not dealing damage. Okay, okay. No, yeah. I, I'm giving you champions that you can yeah. easily pick 1v1 kills, mm -hmm. while at the same time translate into team fights and still do a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah. Now Jace here. Jace, uh, it's the AD option I'm trying to give you. Okay. Um, if, let's say, your jungler is AP and your top lane is AP, you need a AD champion. Jace is a good option because you can easily farm with ranged abilities or just auto attacking with range. Okay. Uh, and you can easily also go melee and get a little bit of tankiness. And in the mid lane, if you're playing against a mage that by default is very squishy, if you mm -hmm. just poke him down with your mm -hmm. EQ combo, if you're okay. familiar with what it does, uh, I think it's drawing a line and then shoot a laser. Yes, his Q, his Q is basically a, a little blast. But if you throw his Q through the line, the portal, uh -huh. it goes with faster speed, it gains more range, and it does a lot more damage. Yeah. So the thing you're gonna do in the laning phase is try to poke the enemy champion with that. And once he gets low, you transform into hammer form and you go melee against him. Okay. That's gonna need a little bit of practice. It sounds confusing talking like this, but if you use the champion, you'll see it's not that hard. You know. Okay. You so basically you poke, poke the enemy using the ranged abilities, and then and once they yes, get like, low health, then you go ahead and you go it. you go ham melee form because his Q he basically jumps to the enemy. You know, it's like a close gapper. Oh, okay, okay. It needs a little bit of range, but it's not like you have to be melee. So you run okay. to him, he gains movement speed, mm -hmm. you jump to the enemy, his E, it's a knockback, so you knock the enemy away. Okay. And most likely you'll have ignite. So, you know, mage are very squishy. If you hit a Q, you yeah. do that combo, you're gonna kill the mage alone. Okay. In the yeah, team fight, where it translate is you can easily just poke the enemy. If you need before engaging, and if they engage very hard on you, you can still be dealing a lot of damage in melee form. You know, there's the okay. diversity. You're you're able to adapt. Okay. Uh, gear on J's, max Q first, then E. Oh, sorry, then E. Okay. Items. You want Murama, Muramana first. So the first thing you want to do anyway is always buy Tear of the Godness. You know okay. that you know the item? Yeah, yeah. It's something rise need a lot. Yeah, that's the f it's like rise. That's one thing you want to have for sure soon to okay. stack. Okay? okay. So okay. Jace goes kind of like the blue Ezreal, you know, with the Muramana to do a lot of damage. So mm -hmm. you need this and then black lever. Okay. If So if you're having a hard time against a mage, let's say you're playing against LeBlanc, you can mm -hmm. ignore Black Cleaver for a second 
and do Mal Mortis first, or at least Hex Drinker. Okay. So actually, why why do we do it? Uh, actually, let's do it like let's let's do it like. Make sure. You do the Muramana, or at least at least you do the tier. If you have the tier, you can skip to Hex Drinker first. Okay. Okay. And then you end it. Uh, I think. Let's put just X so I don't look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I got I got it. Uh, the reason you do X Drinker, it's because it's gonna give you magic resist. Uh -huh. It's gonna give you the magic damage shield. And uh -huh. if you're playing Jace mid lane, that's just gonna give you a big advantage. Okay. But it's also a very offensive item because it's going to give you damage. It will give you armor pen. Mm -hmm. And when you end the more Mortis, it gives you the lifeline grip that when you drop in low HP, you gain spell right. vamp and life okay. steal. Okay. So it's, it's, some, it's one of the core items that um, Akali usually do, right? Hex Drinker. So for that reason, it's, I mean, for most AD champions in the mid lane, that's a go to mm -hmm. item, if you notice. Oh. Even okay. Zed uses it a lot of times, Talon okay. uses it, there's the reason. Okay. Uh, after that, you go for the Black Cleaver, because you do your W in the range form increases your attack speed. Um, so by default, this item also giving you the cooldown, a little bit of HP, a lot of AD. It's a very good item. Okay. And... Guardian Angel. You don't do Zonyas on Zades. But you do a Guardian Angel, and many times, because if you want to do all your combo, you go in melee form, sometimes you're gonna go to the middle of them, if you see a good opportunity. Yeah. And this is the go safe. Uh, of course, Last Whisper and all of these things, I don't need to tell you, depending on the games, you'll see how it goes. But yeah. these items, these skill orders, and these champions, if you want to start going for mid, pick any of them start practicing them okay uh, they're very solid and i'll save this for you and i'll send it to you on skype if you want to let me just sure. champions Oi. Oh, 